Hey there, it's April from Learn, Do, Become Radio, and today is audio number four of our Four Weeks to Finished Organized Mindset series. We're talking about the high of a clean, clear space. If you are looking for audios one, two, and three, you can find those earlier in our podcast feed. That's on Learn, Do, Become Radio on any podcast player, or you can go to learndobecome.com slash start today. And those three are on there, plus links to our four weeks to finish program, which is launching May 31st, 2022 for the second time. We're super excited and hope that you are feeling like you can get organized. And if you need a little bit more support and coaching from us here at Team Learn Do Become, we've got it for you in our four weeks to finish program. All the details and to get on the wait list for four weeks to finished is learndobecome.com slash four weeks. That's the number four, W-E-E-K-S. Okay, let's dive in. As we're talking about the high of a clean, clear space, I want to share some very common sentiments that I hear from people who are living in clutter, whether it's digital or physical or mental clutter. It's things like this. Oh, it doesn't bother me. I hardly even notice it. There are other things more pressing. I'll get to it someday, but I actually do fine in a cluttered environment. Now, these things may be true. These sentiments may be absolutely true. If clutter is not a problem for you, I'm not here to tell you that it should be, but something brought you here to learn to become and something is causing you to feel overwhelmed. And I want to share some ideas today that may encourage you to prioritize the clearing of clutter in your life, because I genuinely believe it will make a bigger impact than you might anticipate. So first, let's talk about the subconscious chatter that goes on in your mind. We all have an internal dialogue, and that dialogue is what affects our emotions. So you feel the way you think, and then you think the way you feel, and that's how we create our personalities and our identities and our patterns and our ruts. We create thought habits that either keep us moving forward or keep us feeling stuck. So this probably doesn't sound super new to you. When someone has a panic attack, for example, it stems from the subconscious or conscious thoughts taking place at that time. When you live in clutter, I'm willing to bet that your subconscious chatter is keeping you in that clutter. And you might be thinking things like, oh, my house is such a mess. There's too much going on. I can't keep up. I'm not put together. I can't find anything. I don't know how to create a beautiful environment. I'm letting myself and my family down. I heard my mom saying these kinds of things all while I was growing up, and it hurt my heart to see how weighed down she often felt. And in the past, I've said these things to myself as well. And even currently, there are times I say things like this to myself. So I'm very, very familiar with that constant chatter. And I just want you to be able to think about it, at least be aware of it. However, when you clear your space and create an environment that inspires you, even if it is simple or done on a budget or not fancy to anyone else, Your thoughts will naturally change when you see evidence of order and cleanliness and simplicity around you. Your mood will lift and your subconscious chatter will change to things like, wow, this looks so good. I've kept this clean for weeks now. I can handle my life. I can manage what's on my plate. I'm showing up for myself and my family in a beautiful way. I'm competent. I'm moving at a pace that makes sense. Don't this feel good? (laughs) And it's subtle. You might not even notice how much your environment impacts you in the moment, but it is going to make a big difference that you'll hardly be able to quantify. All right, so that's the subconscious chatter part. Now let's talk about numbness and decision fatigue. One reason you might say that the mess doesn't need to be a priority is because your brain has literally gone numb to it. This is a concept I first learned from David Allen, author of Getting Things Done. Because we can't handle all the decisions that a big old room of stuff represents, our brains will protect themselves by shutting off the scanners that notice those kinds of things. If thinking about the stuff is too painful and requires too much energy, we stop. We don't think about it. And then we just tell ourselves it isn't bothering us. 
but it's not true. It is bothering us to the point that if we focus on it, we often start getting rashes or hyperventilating or something like that. But we don't have to be afraid of a calm mind and clear space. It doesn't need to be complicated. The reason you probably don't want to make routines or project lists or look at your calendar is partly because it's a habit and partly because we make it so complicated (laughs) that it stresses us out to look at it. So the solution is to make the process of projects and routines and tasks and calendar creation so simple that you feel lighter when you engage with it. That is why you need to get good at making decisions, and that's why you need a seamless humming command central. But then part of you thinks you don't want to get organized because you don't have enough information to do it perfectly, or you might lose out on options, and perhaps we can address those things at a different time. But the main idea here is that getting organized will heighten your decision-making capabilities and actually give you more control over the way you gather and process information. So it's worth the effort. Finally, let's talk about how we get a high in our lives. Clearly, there are a lot of unhealthy ways to feel an emotional high, and that's what drives people into addictions like drugs and alcohol, shopping, gambling, screens, food, the need for praise, etc. Throughout my life, I have turned to some unhealthy behaviors in order to feel a sense of satisfaction and contentment. When I was 13, for example, my dad kept tons of candy in the trunk of his car. He liked to buy Halloween candy when it went on sale, and he could control himself eating just a little each day. But my mom didn't want it in the house where it was a temptation, so she told him to keep it in his trunk and drive it to work each day where she wouldn't see it. Now, every night, I knew if I went out to the trunk, I could have an Abba Zabba or bottle caps or something else to satisfy my sweet tooth. But that led to a lot of weight gain and shame and hiding in my room and just generally not feeling great. In high school, being active in school gave me an emotional high. So I signed up for every club and group and ran for student office every semester and tried out for every play. And I got so little sleep, all because of the need to feel important. Early in my motherhood, wiping counters and keeping the house clean became a bit of a compulsion. And when we first started our business, repeatedly checking our stats or spending hours on busy work gave me that high I was looking for. And you probably have at least a few stories like mine where you've gotten into routines that haven't served you, but you desperately wanted to feel some sense of achievement or accomplishment. When we either turn to addictive behaviors, whether they are applauded or not by society, or when we sacrifice the relationships in our lives in order to feel some sense of happiness and meaning, that high will never last and it will never leave us truly happy. No matter how many bites of candy went into my mouth, no matter how many activities I did in school, no matter how clean my counters got or how well my website stats were, that wasn't the kind of joy I was looking for. And I'm not the expert in this by any means, but as I've thought deeply about this concept and overcome my own unhealthy behaviors to the point I can actually talk about them and not feel embarrassed or stressed, and as I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people around the globe, I've learned that when we can get a high from a natural, well-paced, values-driven, healthy lifestyle, we can feel good almost every day and feel a sense of lasting joy. Now, clearing clutter in our minds and hearts and physical spaces is a big part of that. We're not cleaning and organizing in a compulsive way in order to make ourselves more valuable. We're creating happy, meaningful lives that are sustainably good without having to try so hard. The other day I said, Eric, I want to get a lot of work done this month so I can relax next month when Spencer is out of school. And Eric lovingly replied, how about we work well this month and relax and then also relax next month? (laughs) And that was such a better goal. (laughs) 
I'm still working on this concept now. I mean, creating relationships, work and self-care and service to the world that brings so much joy that I never feel the need to escape from them. And that is the kind of emotional high that I want for you too. And that is what our community here at Learn Do Become is creating together. And it's not that we can't do those things when we're living in clutter, but it is a whole lot easier when you have a clear clean, calm foundation on which to build. So I invite you to ask yourself what your internal chatter is typically saying when you walk around your home and office. What's that voice in your head saying? And next, I'd like you to consider the clutter that is in your life and ask yourself if your mind has gone numb to any of it because too many decisions are buried in there. And again, nothing to be ashamed of, but it's just something good to think about, something good to assess. And finally, I'd love for you to consider how you currently get an emotional high in your life. Are your routines and habits healthy? Are they serving you? And would everything feel easier if all the clutter were gone? Now we're on this journey together. There will always be bumps along the road. And I'm willing to share my humanness because I want you to know we're not robots over here at Learn to Become. We, you know, very human. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> very human. <laughs> but hopefully these thoughts were helpful for you today and I'm sending lots of love. Okay, closing up now. If you want to work with us at Four Weeks to Finished and you're listening to this audio before May 31st, 2022, or if you're listening to this in the future when we're open again, or at least the wait list is open, come visit learndobecome.com slash four weeks. So the number four, W-E-E-K-S. To find out more, this is where you're going to build your Step Command Central with me and Eric and the team special Facebook group, special coaching. We're all in (laughs) four weeks, get it done. We've got amazing testimonials. You can check out on that page. We'll be publishing more and more. I've got a whole list. We just got to format them. Anyway, so excited. Okay. Hopefully it's helpful. Sending lots of love.